Our line as we begin worship is quite simple. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise. Let's hear it. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise. All right. I like it. I like it. So let us worship now. We're using the words from Psalm 149 and 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise God in God's fortress, the sky. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise. Let them praise God's name in the mighty acts of our Lord. Praise God as suits God's incredible greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with lute and lyre. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise. Praise God with drum and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with loud cymbals. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let them praise God's name with dance. Let them sing God's praise. Let every living thing praise the Lord. Take some time now and open yourself up in silent confession. Admit to God the times that you have held back in worship and praise of God, where you have allowed the naysayers and the Michaels, Saul's daughters, convince you that you had to be quiet about praising your God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear these words from Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8, and celebrate the grace that you have been given in the particular and unique ways in which God has given it to you. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Friends, believe this good news. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. Let us celebrate our praise and thanks with all creation as we hear how the deer itself praises God. Oh, 
Thank you very much for that beautiful hymn. All right, young people, it is your time to be front and center, kids. I'm going to warn you, those that are watching at home, you're going to need a little space to move about because today's children's sermon is on dancing. Now, I will admit, I am not the greatest dancer. I think John Travolta is marginally better than I am. But other than that, for those of you who've ever seen me in action at a wedding, you know when it's time to dance and celebrate God's given joys and blessings to us, I can cut a rug. Okay, and I think our young people at home need to know that. So kids, I want you to think right now, like, what is your best dance move? You know, maybe some of you got like the Fortnite thing going on. You could do this thing. I can't really do that. I can't do the floss thing unless it's with my teeth. Um, and oral hygiene is really important to so make sure you're really flossing, not just doing the, you know, this flossing thing. My son's already embarrassed because he's like, that's not even close. <laughs> There's all these wonderful new dance moves that I need someone to teach me how to do because I only know things like the chicken dance. You know, I can get down with that one. That's a pretty good one, okay? And the hokey pokey, I can put my whole self in, and then my whole self out, and then in, and then. See, I mean, you see it, this, but kids, you are young enough now that you are not afraid to dance. You like get into it with your whole body. You just put everything out there, whether you know moves or not. The world is going to try to press you in and get you to dance just like this you got to look cool and it doesn't want you to show off and be flashy and let your body just express the joy that God has given you. The world is going to do things like that. And I, I quite frankly don't understand why we look at kids as adults and we see you dancing and we laugh and we love it. And then you have to like pry us with a, a, a crowbar out of our seats at the wedding to get us to get up and dance or at church to get up and dance. God forbid we tried to dance during worship, right? Okay, well, that's good. That's good. What is it about this world that tries to tell us that our faith can only be expressed like in here or with words? Our whole body should be used in the expression of our faith and our joy and our exuberance to God. That's what happens in our Bible story today. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 12 to 22, David, King David, no less, is so excited about what God has done, that God has come into the bounds of his kingdom and God has come and blessed his people, that he goes dancing in front of God. He throws a big celebration and every time they walk six steps, he offers two sacrifices to God. I mean, think about that. He goes six steps and then has church and then he goes six more steps and then has church. You all thought it was long here on Sunday morning. Can you imagine how long it took them to get from point A to point B, celebrating all along the way? And what's really amazing about that is he didn't just celebrate for himself because when he gets home, his wife tells him, you embarrassed yourself. You look silly out there. You look ridiculous. You were dressed like a fool. You were dancing and showing off. And he said, no, I was humbling myself before God. I was humiliating myself in honor of God. You see, that's what it's about. It's not about us showing off and how great our dance moves might be. It's not about us making ourselves look ridiculous. It's about us letting loose all of the barriers and the self-consciousness and the worries we have about what somebody might say about how we dance and how we worship God. And it's about fully and faithfully just worshiping God with our whole bodies. So I want you to remember that whether you do it through dance or other actions or activities, especially as you do it through your words, don't hold back. That doesn't mean that you have to be loud or flashy or show off. It does mean that you have to be sincere and, dare I say, intense with the energy and the amount of love you pour out to and for God. So this is me, Pastor Adam, reaching out to you, the children of God, and saying, don't hold back. Don't ever let someone say, don't worship God that way. It needs to be reserved. Don't show how much you love God. Don't even let that voice inside your head say, don't do that. Someone might say something. Someone might think something. I encourage you right now, your whole life long, to continue to just dance in celebration of God. 
Pray with me, would you? And this is a repeat after me prayer. So I'll say a line and you say a line. God, who is Lord of the dance. God, who is Lord of the dance. Whether I clap on one and three. Whether I clap on one and three. Or I dance to the beat. Or I dance to the beat. May my whole life long. May my whole life long. Be a joyful celebration to you. Be a joyful celebration to you. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. And dance. Amen. Amen. All right. You might want to stick around for the story so you can hear a little bit more and understand why this story is so important. But if you've got to go be a kid, just dance along your way. God bless you. I'll see you next week. All right. Now we'll do scripture. You got to take a beat. You know, you don't want to just flow right. one thing into the next. You got to Timing. take a beat. Timing is everything. That's right. So we are in the midst of our August adventures. And before I get into this, I got to give a shout out to my sister, the Reverend Linda Wygant. Thank you so much for coming and preaching and leading worship. I have heard so many compliments about what you did here last week. Thank you so much. Thank you, congregation, for showing up. Oftentimes when the pastor's gone, attendance drops down. But actually, attendance went up last week. And you all said how much you like the guest preacher. <laughs> Should we be packing boxes? No. Okay. I'm not going to worry about that. I am going to celebrate that God brought the word and worship here. And that is a testimony to how we individually bring parts of the Holy Spirit, mash it together and have this community of faith. And I thank God for that. We're on a series of adventures. We're exploring the august nature of David through the books of first and second Samuel. And we're hearing that David, even though he's exuberant and faithful and committed to God, doesn't always get it right. He makes mistakes. He makes some mistakes today in this story too. But he also celebrates and dances to the music for God. Let's pray. God, open up our hearts. Open up our ears. Open up our eyes. Open up our bodies to receive this, your word. A story of David and the struggle he had to show his faith. A story that's important to us today, too, as we feel hemmed in by worries, doubts, anxieties, pandemics, all these things that are trying to get us to compartmentalize our faith and tuck it in in quiet, neat places. God, help us to celebrate and dance to the music of your Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name and the people of faith said, amen. amen. So here now. The story of 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verses 12 through 22. King David was told, The Lord has blessed Obed-Edom's family and everything he has because of God's chest being there. So David went and brought God's chest up from Obed-Edom's family to David's city with celebration. Whenever those bearing the chest advanced six steps, David sacrificed an ox and a fatling calf. David dressed in a linen priestly vest. He danced with all his strength before the Lord. This is how David and the entire house of Israel brought up the Lord's chest with shouts and trumpet blasts. Now, as the Lord's chest entered David's city, Saul's daughter, Michael, was watching from a window. She saw King David jumping and dancing before the Lord, and she lost all respect for him. The Lord's chest was brought in and put in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it. Then David offered entirely burnt offerings in the Lord's presence in addition to well-being sacrifices. When David finished offering the entirely burned offerings and the well-being sacrifices, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of heavenly forces. He distributed food among all the people of Israel to the whole crowd, male and female, each receiving a loaf of bread, a date cake, and a raisin cake. Then all the people went back to their homes. David went home to bless his household, but Saul's daughter Michael came out to meet him. How did Israel's king honor himself today? She said, 
by exposing himself in plain view of the female servants of his subjects like any indecent person would. David replied to Michael, I was celebrating before the Lord who chose me over your father and your entire family and who appointed me leader over the Lord's people, over Israel. And I will celebrate before the Lord again. I may humiliate myself even more and I may be humbled in my own eyes, but I will be honored by the female servants you're talking about. Now for my married couples, you know that David didn't respond exactly perfectly right there. There's a whole sermon on that. We're going to focus though today on this concept of celebrating before the Lord. We're going to focus on the way that when we let go of our inhibitions to celebrate God fully and completely, joyfully and unselfconsciously, the Michaels of the world come along and tell us, tisk tisk. No. You can't do that. You're supposed to worship God in this little prescribed box. That's not a way. That's the way to worship God. When we stop to think about it, I mean, what's really the big deal about dancing? Am I right? At this moment, everyone is chronicling in their mind other things that we've done during sermons when we've been active. And if you've never given God thanks for COVID, that's why you're not getting up and dancing in the sermon right now. So you want to give God some praise and thanks for COVID just once during this whole pandemic, because that's not, that's why we're not going to practice dancing. But I want you to think about that. What is really wrong with dancing in worship? Why is Michael so uptight about the fact that David was celebrating what God had done, that God was entering back into the kingdom of Israel? God was returning to God's people. Why is she so upset? Many of you will say, well, Adam, it's because David was naked. Now, hold on. You just heard me read the story. Did I say the word naked once? Did I say underwear? Did I even say the biblical term for underwear, loincloth? No. He was dressed in priestly vestments. What this means is he was wearing what the clergy would wear instead of what the king would wear. Are you getting an idea of how uptight Michael was? She's upset because he doesn't look like royalty. He's not behaving with the regality that royalty should behave. He's dancing and singing and wearing the clothes of a clergy person. He's completely invested, pun intended, in worshiping God. Let's put this in your mind a little bit. Who saw the movie Footloose? There's an 80s version and a 2011 version. It's got uh, Kevin Bacon in the 80s version. And he's up against the town minister, John Lithgow. By the way, anybody remember what denomination John Lithgow was? Had to be a Come on, had to be a, that's right. He's Presbyterian. Why do we look so stuck in the mud in Hollywood movies? I don't know. Maybe because we are a little bit. But in the movie, the town has made it illegal to dance. <laughs> Some of you are like, yes. Others are like, really? So okay, can come in from New York to this you know, rural town begins to make an argument for why they should be allowed to dance. And what's interesting is, I didn't remember this. I was watching scenes of the movie to prepare for this sermon. What's interesting, when he goes in front of like the town council and the church council and everything to make a treatise on why they should dance, he quotes from Psalm 149 and 150, which I had already put in worship, not thinking about it. And then guess what he quotes from? 2 Samuel 6. 12 to 22, which I had totally not picked on. But like, this is a conversation that happens again and again. People try and put God in this box of how we're supposed to behave. And here we have an example in scripture of God saying to us, no, I want you to use your whole body, your whole self, your whole expression to dance, to celebrate me in worship. There are many things trying to hem us in, trying to convince us about how we should behave. There's this, uh, in the opening scene of this horrible Tom Hanks movie called Joe vs. the Volcano, which is actually a wonderful Tom Hanks movie. It shows all these people walking to work and they're all walking like with their heads down with this just like humdrum, broken, bored expression as they head into this factory and this, this music is droning on and on. 
I felt that way as I was walking around this week doing some shopping. I had to go to a multitude of different stores. And as I'm walking around, everyone else is walking with their shoulders haunched. Most people are like looking down. It's, it's, it's what I call the COVID look. They're walking, you know, looking down with their masks. I would say hi to people. I mean, like six feet away, mask on and everything. Hi, look me right in the eyes and ignore me. No response. There's this like pall over us right now. And it's not just COVID. There's the rising costs of things. There's unemployment, underemployment. There's the uncertainty of our future. Can I say election without people getting up and running out or throwing things at me? There are all these things that are happening around us. Racial, gender, socioeconomic injustice, inequalities, all this weight that is holding us down and making us think and look and be like that, walking around dejected, our heads down, our, our shoulders hunched. All the while, the Michaels of the world are smugly satisfied that this is the state of things. Well, I say it's time to dance. I say it is time for us to celebrate, to shake that off, to break loose somehow from this cycle that's got a hold on us, that tells us things are bad and getting worse and going to be even worse than that. That you should not be excited about life right now, but instead you should be upset. For people like her, it's a dignity thing. You don't demean yourself by throwing off caution and celebrating God fully, even if it is for the Lord. They might make the argument that it's about reverence and respect. And I agree, but that does not equal stuffiness, not at the expense of releasing the joy and demonstrating the exuberance that we have for God. It might not be through dance. You might be saying to yourself, Adam, I'm not dancing up and down the aisles of the jewel. That's not going to happen. And I'm not necessarily asking you to do that. It's not about I'm introverted and that's something for extroverts to do. It's about how you're carrying your own spirit. And if people, as they approach you, as they see you, can tell there is a person that has the joy of the Lord in their heart. It's just coming off of them. When I was training in the restaurant business, one of the things they taught us to do was how to answer the phone. And it wasn't giving us the script of what we were to say. It was when you answered the phone, make sure that you smile. And I'm thinking, boy, that's dumb. Who is going to see me smiling through a receiver, right? It was before, you know, FaceTime and, and video phone calls and stuff like that. I'm like, who's going to see me smiling? And the person that was teaching me probably read it in the expression of my face and said, the reason you smile is because it brings a lilt in your voice. People can't see it, but they can hear the difference. And so I started thinking, okay, so how can we celebrate before the Lord short of dancing up and down the aisles right now and dancing as we're walking on the city streets? How can we celebrate before the Lord? And then I thought, okay, this much of our face is showing. What could be said? What could be done with this part of our face? And if you think you can't make expressions with your eyes that are impressive, I want you to watch the movie Dunkirk and watch Tom Hardy's character who has a mask on the whole time. He's a pilot. He has a mask on the whole time. And he makes the most amazing expressions with his eyes throughout this whole film. And so I thought, what about if that's how we dance? Do you think you can smile with your eyes as you're walking up and down the aisles? First of all, do you think you can look up? Okay, your shoes are going to be fine. They're going to stay on your feet. You put them there. Do you think you can smile with your eyes so that as you're walking up and down the aisles, even if you can't talk to people, this right here is saying, celebrate the Lord. There is joy in God's presence in the world today. Celebrate the Lord. You might say to me, Adam, all the ways that you can't dance or won't, and I say to you, that is Michael speaking through your heart. You are letting her words and the words of those like her force you to be ashamed in front of the Lord instead of being exuberant and excited. Now, as you're hearing this and you're thinking, Adam, that's well and good, but you know what? There's some serious problems. 
There are some serious issues. There are things that we really need to face and address. Okay, well, let's look at David again, shall we? Because it's not all just singing and dancing. He's not walking around like a 1940s Hollywood musical, is he? What does he do in verse 18 and 19? He feeds the people. He blesses the people. He gives them bread and a date cake and a raisin cake. He says, I'm going to celebrate before God. I'm going to sing. I'm going to look silly in the eyes of the Michaels of the world. But as I celebrate, as I share the joy I have in my heart of this God, I'm also going to share the blessings I've been given. Here's an ox. Here's a fatted calf. God, I give that offering to you. You think they threw all that in the garbage after they sacrificed it for God? Here's bread, people. You're hungry? Have something to eat. The whole crowd, male and female. He had joy in his service. How many of you have ever, ever done a pack with Feed My Starving Children? And you know what I'm talking about when I say how you can have joy in the service. Feed My Starving Children is this organization that feeds people that are literally starving to death. If you were to give them like a steak dinner and potatoes, they would throw it up right away because their bodies have started to shut down and break down from not having food for so long. And so it has this like medically, scientifically created formula. It's got rice and these nutrients and this powder and stuff. And so when you're making the little food bags, you have to like take a scoop and put it in and take a scoop and put it in. You do this for like a four hour shift. It's boring. It is mundane. It is humdrum. But what they do is they have this music pumping. It's like, and then you like, you start moving. You like, you get a little rhythm going on with you and you get a little shake going on. You're like, oh yeah. And then they tell each little team that's working, you have a name. You're like a country or a sports team or a fruit or something like that. And when you fill up your box, you got to yell out something cool. So you're like, Uruguay, pack the box. And like all, just a twist of the wrist becomes a celebration of God. And what are you doing? You're packing food for starving people. So this celebration thing is not just about being ridiculous and showing off and having fun. There's a service component to it. And that's what David is showing us. The world's not going to make it easy. You're not going to walk up to the first person in the store or start serving the community meal with a little song and dance and a smile. And the people are, oh, that's so great. I was waiting for someone to tell me to celebrate life. No, the world is going to push back and say, no. Don't stop. Sit down. Be quiet. You're embarrassing yourself. You're embarrassing me. You're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to be august and adventurous in the expression of your faith? Are you going to save it up just for Sunday morning because I said it's okay to do it here? There's six other days in the week to celebrate the Lord in the expression of joy and love that you have as your gift from the Holy Spirit, as we heard read from Romans when we celebrated grace. The world's going to tell you, don't do it. And you might think to yourself, Adam, those are nice examples, but they're all like church. Who ever heard of the guy named Patch Adams? Yeah, you probably saw the Robin Williams movie. Have you ever seen the actual Patch Adams? He looks ridiculous. Half his gray head is dyed blue and he wears different red paisley striped pants. Like he looks like a walking American flag. He's got an awesome handlebar mustache. Awesome handlebar mustache. I got a thing for handlebar mustaches. They're super cool, but I can't grow one. He had a vision that doctors shouldn't be stuffy and boring. That They shouldn't just dispense medicine like machines. And so he tried to start a hospital. You would think that starting a free hospital would have all kinds of support. And yes, people wanted to go there, but it took him 40 years to make his vision come true. And just to put it in perspective, his movie came out in 1998. It was another 20 years before he was able to fully fund the vision of the hospital that he wanted to create. All along the way, they were going and talking in 170 different countries. They were going into war zones, refugee camps, and they're putting little basters on their nose to look like clowns and being silly. And they were taking and blending together all aspects of medicine, including dance, as a way to heal people. In one particular YouTube video that I saw, he talked about how they had a number of patients with um, psychotic and psychiatric needs and how they never once gave them medication. He tells a story of how he held a schizophrenic for 10 hours, just encouraging them and saying, I love you. 
I love you. You have value. You are important. This celebration thing telling you it is profound. It's real. It is a gift that God has given us. Are we going to let the Michaels of the world tell us no because it might be embarrassing? There is a way to speak back, to push back against that. I don't know how many of you ever heard the song by uh, Leanne Womack. The title is, I Hope You Dance. How many of you have cried with the father-daughter dance at a wedding hearing this song play, right? Or the mother-son one. Mom, if you're watching, better get a Kleenex. In it, she says, I hope you never lose your sense of wonder, that you get your fill to eat, but always keep that hunger. May you never take one single breath for granted. God forbid love ever leave you empty-handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. Whenever one door closes, I hope one more opens. Promise me that you'll give your faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Faith United, I hope you dance. I hope you dance in the face of the challenges that we are amidst right now. I hope you dance when you think about kids having to learn remote at home and working parents trying to figure out what they can do and our church saying, maybe there's a ministry we can create. Maybe there's something we can invent. I hope you dance when you're faced with the challenges as you look at an extremely long prayer chain list and think of all the people that are suffering and all the people that are hurting. I hope you can still dance in the face of that, proclaiming glory to God who will bring a healing one way or another. I hope that you can be a people that throws off what our own faith tradition has told us in terms of being the frozen, chosen, stuffy, stoic Presbyterians and that you can celebrate God fully and completely. I hope that you're willing to dance and explore new moves. Whether it's words, song, physical expression, even thoughts, meditation, a new way of praying. I hope that you dance facing all of these challenges, because when you do find ways to dance, you are living out the hope of a hopeful God who is in this world today, living, breathing, and dancing right along with us. This is the opportunity that God has gifted us this day. This is the opportunity God has gifted us with the New Beginnings program. It's not about making sure our church survives. It's not about being afraid of what our future may hold and uncertain things. It's about an invitation to explore our faith and express with exuberance how we can dance before the Lord, knowing God's presence is coming with us and behind us. I want you to think this week about all the opportunities that you have, all the opportunities that you will have this week to express your faith. I could go on all day and list them. Instead, I'm going to pray that you just dance. Amen. You know, this, uh, this dance that we're called to, uh, the, I'm looking around and I see some folks that I've been with on, on mission trips. And uh, sometimes mission is going to Honduras or Kentucky. Sometimes mission is going to feed my starving children, which is excellent. It, it, it feeds you more than you feed them. Uh, sometimes it's just smiling, you know, we're all a little Irish, and when Irish eyes are happy. All right, enough of that. And, and it is all built on the foundation of God's love for us. That's the foundation. That's where it's built. And that foundation will never, ever move.
Amen. Well, indeed, we have that firm foundation of faith in God, and it leads us from one place to another. It opens doors, it closes doors, it begins new chapters, and it concludes entire novels and stories. As we stand here today, we have two new members, almost, who are so excited about what God has called them to do here in this place that they are committing to journey with us. They are opening a new chapter even as they're closing the previous one. And we are excited for Anthony and Sarah. And this is going to be weird because I'm used to like you coming up and doing all this stuff. So I want you to just, I'm a, should I make them stand? They're young, right? Yeah, Let's yeah, make them stand. Make them stand up, you, <laughs> you young, young whippersnappers, you. All right, good. good. We're going to put you on blast and display. We're going to walk through a process right now. Yeah. Let's give God some glory and praise. As this is an act of the entire church, even though I'm going to do a lot of the talking, we begin with one of our ruling elders on session presenting the candidates to you. Take it away, Carol. Friends, you come to us as members of the one holy Catholic church into which you were baptized and by which you have been nurtured. We are one with each other, sisters and brothers in this family of God, and we rejoice in the gifts that you bring to us, even as we offer you gifts today. As you join with us in worship and service of this congregation, it's fitting that together we reaffirm the covenant into which we were baptized, claiming again the promises of God, which are ours in baptism. Hear these words from scripture, Ephesians chapter four, verses four to six, which say, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and creator of all who is above all and through all and in all. Sisters and brothers, our baptism is a sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism and therefore, I ask you again to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church in which we were baptized. Anthony and Sarah, trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. Sorry? Oh, okay, all right, good. <laughs> do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. Much better. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. Congregation, please join them in affirming the faith through this litany of the Apostles' Creed. Do you all believe in God the Father? Father Almighty, maker of, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's Jesus only Son, Lord, our Lord, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Ghost, Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered Lord, under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, Lord, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Normally, we lay hands on you. And since this whole COVID thing has made ministry really creative, I'm going to challenge these Presbyterians who love God and Jesus and include the Holy Spirit once in a while just so it looks nice to extend their hands 
and extend the Holy Spirit as we pray for Anthony and Sarah. God, we thank you that they found their way to this congregation. We thank you because we know it came about as the end of a journey with another congregation. And out of that closing, you opened and resurrected a new life. We pray for them, Lord, with the hurdles that they will leap individually and together. We pray for them for the challenges that they will face. We pray for the gifts, the ideas, and the ministry that they bring to this place. And we ask that we would receive them as graciously as they have welcomed us into their lives. May we find, Lord, through our wandering and our wondering together, a deeper expression of your purpose in our lives together. We pray this in Jesus' name. And the people of faith said, Amen. Amen. COVID can't stop us from giving you gifts. So I have gifts for you here, okay? I have your official certificates. So you can like bring these around with you and show them off. You know, like maybe when you guys go to work on Monday, like I'm Presbyterian now, check it, okay? If that is not how you want to show everyone, we have little pins for you, little crosses. You can throw that on like, you know, your lapel, the corner. I have one in my car, so I'm driving because if you see me drive, I need God with me, Okay. So this is an expression um, of our faith and our connected. And then, of course, we have a Bible for you. I don't know how good you are at sharing, so you each get your own Bible, okay? And then we have some special gifts. As I said, you came to us as a result of your home church in Evergreen Park closing, and that was one piece of your faith journey. And here you're going to find other pieces of your faith journey. And so I got you a little... A little puzzle as a reminder of our faith journey together and how God puts all the pieces. But I know you like cats, so it's a cute little cat puzzle. Hopefully, as you build it together, um, not only are you filled with the affection of this image, but also you contemplate all the different pieces of your life that God has put and assembled more and more a fuller picture. God is also interesting when it comes to timing. We never know exactly why God is doing what God is doing. And when we try and figure it out, the when becomes even more of a mystery. So I have here a little thirsty bird egg timer for you. Um, the way it works is through thermodynamics and it's magic if you don't know anything about thermodynamics. But if you do, it's you know just science. So I would invite you to not read the side of the box right away and just marvel at the timing of the bird as a way of reminding yourself of the mystery of faith in God and how God's timing works. And then if you really get curious, you can go ahead and read it because just like the Bible, we can find out things about God by, you know, reading the contents. So these are gifts. I'll give them to you at some point before you leave today. But thank you for joining our congregation. And I promise as soon as we can, you're both getting a huge hug from me and this congregation. Amen, friends. Amen. All right. Welcome and thank you. Our minute for mission today is the ministry known as Change for a Dollar. Uh, sort of like the um, space-time continuum rules of Back to the Future, no matter how many times I explain it, people seem to not be able to understand it. So I'm going to try it one more time. By showing up here today, you earned a dollar in the credit that we're going to give to a family or a person who is in need. You don't have to give a dollar. You don't have to figure out like where the money's going to come from. The outreach team has already set it up. You just coming here today is worth a dollar. Well, I mean, you're worth more than a dollar. Maybe Christopher is just a dollar, but the rest of you are definitely worth more than a dollar. Okay. <laughs> but we're representing that as a way of giving to a family or a person in need. I've gotten many suggestions. You may go ahead and make another one, um, but I've already gotten several throughout the week. So by making more sort of make my job harder, but that's good. Um, we like having to discern and figure out where is the best way that we can make this contribution to someone who is in need. And so thank you just for showing up or for tuning in today because that is helping to make sure that someone else is taken care of. At this time, we open it up to prayers. Are there any blessings? Are there any joys? Are there any concerns people want to raise? Just raise your hand from where you are and I'll hear you and relay it through the mic. So Noel, you had your hand up right away. What you got? So we're celebrating that Mike Garvey's heartbeat is normal. We thank God for that. Excellent. Praise the Lord for that. Felicia's aunt who has cancer. Okay. 
We pray for her too. Thank you, Noel. Sally? People of California with the wildfires and also I understand there's a hurricane forming around the Gulf, Louisiana. We pray for those folks as well. There's two of them, okay? We pray for those individuals. We pray that God can help them to weather the storm. Other joys, other concerns? Sally, go ahead. Yeah, there's two benches in the pollinator garden there. They are socially distanced, so two people could come and sit and have some great conversation. And if the spirit should move you, you can pull a few weeds. I saw a hand. Yes, Sue. Yeah. We give yeah. praise for a grandson born after a high-risk pregnancy. When the ovation, yeah, go ahead. Again, gratitude to God for the mending of a family relationship. What's your grandson's name? Roman Alexander. That's very regal. He could wear the royal vestments and get away with it like right now. Yeah. We praise, we praise God for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other joys, other concerns? Dr. Smith. So we thank God that Sister Carol is getting better, battling Parkinson's, diabetes, the age of 87, and facing COVID too. So we thank God for the continued healing and strengthening of her. Thank you, Dr. Smith, for lifting that up. Other joys or concerns to share? Yes, Carol. Okay, so prayers, Maggie, preparing to be called home to the Lord and prayers for her sister, Barbara, who is struggling with that, the weight of that loss in that situation. Continue prayers for them. Thank you. Yes, Lana. Prayers for Liz, who's already on the prayer chain. Continued prayers for her. Thank you. Sally? Prayers for Sylvia celebrating something with her husband. 50 years. 50 years of marriage celebrating. It only felt like five, right? Okay, yeah, good. Prayers for them. Christopher. Prayers for Nick Fisher starting a new job next week. That is excellent. We are excited for him. And prayers, too, for um, all the families whose kids are going back to school or already have gone back to school. Prayers for the multitude of teachers that are in our congregation that are trying to figure out how they can teach at school and then have their kids learn remotely at home. There are some real, real big challenges that we're facing. Prayers for that. Prayers that we can figure out how we as a church can contribute and offer some assistance. Other prayers today. Yes, Carla. That's awesome. Thanks be to God for a grandson who set up a lemonade stand. That's beautiful. And he's doing really well. Passing on to the Michael James Foundation. And what a blessing that is. So tell him, keep doing a good job. Other joys, other concerns? I have one. Go ahead. Uh, our friend Tim is back in the hospital. Okay. Prayers for the Smith's friend Tim, who's on our prayer list. He's back in the hospital again. So prayers for him. 
Any other joys or concerns to share? Yes, Janine. Prayers, two more grandchildren, twins are coming. Okay. Prayers for them. That's awesome. Excellent. A boy and a girl. Matching set. Second set of twins. Holy cow. Hopefully they saved all the matching outfits from the first time. All right. Other joys or concerns to do. I mean, if you want a lot of kids, twins is the way to go. It's one less pregnancy. I mean, it's, you know, you double up. It's a little harder, though. <laughs> yeah. Other joys or concerns to share. I have these invitations for those who are walking with us here. We thank you for that. And we always invite a deeper relationship with Christ. The first invitation is one to baptism. If you would like to, as just as Anthony and Sarah did, celebrate a profession of faith, reject sin and evil in the world, and accept the gift of grace through Jesus Christ into your heart, we celebrate that for you. If there's anyone who has not been baptized and would like to be baptized, simply raise your hand and we celebrate the gift of new life. Anyone seeking baptism today? You've seen how relatively painless it is to become a member. Now, once you're a member, it's totally different. It becomes extremely painful and arduous because you got to put up with all sorts of things. But to become a member is not really hard at all, right, guys? Painless. Yeah, they did it from the shade of a tent. So if you feel that God is calling you to commit your service to this church by becoming a member, um, we celebrate that, and we are excited. We try to use the word disciple as opposed to member because it's not a country club after all. It's a faith community. And we are disciples of Christ following his example. And so if you'd like to become a disciple for Jesus Christ and commit yourself here, simply raise your hand and we celebrate that. Anyone seeking to do that here at Faith United today? And our last invitation is one for prayer. You've heard a lot of the needs. You've heard a lot of the joys. Is anyone willing to pray with me this morning? All right. We begin with silence prayer to our God, where you can allow the Holy Spirit to dance within your heart, and then we will pray aloud together. We join our hearts right now because we can't yet join our hands. But we know and we hope that the time is coming when we will shake off these bubbles and we will be a people that is collected again. In the meantime, we continue to exercise the power of the Holy Spirit to connect us beyond hands, beyond words, heart to heart, soul to soul. We pray, God, for those who have needs that are too deep for words, and we ask that the Holy Spirit would sigh with them and for them. It would help a sister to be able to release her sister back to you and give her comfort in doing so. It would help folks who are facing surgery, battling cancer, are hospitalized again, are fighting off three different diseases, as well as the power of the ticking clock of time. That you would deliver those people, God, and you would let them know that you are there. That you give cause for celebration, even in the midst of the feelings of anxiety and agony and pain. We thank you, God, for life and for new life, for new members, for the promise of children. We thank you for the institutions of learning. Every house is becoming a school, God. Help us to be mindful of the responsibility that we have and to honor what it is that we will teach. Help us to lead lives of joy, Lord, even in the face of the naysayers and the doubters and the constrictors that try to get us to hold back, to resist, to compress our faith. God, we ask that you would allow us to express it as freely as we do here and now. That joy would be the word. Celebration would be the means. And we would dance in our walk. We pray this even as your son Jesus taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us be mindful of the fact that even though David and the Israelites celebrated that God returned, we knew that God never left. We don't need a chest or a church to prove that the God who stays is always with us. Let us hear this song and make it the promise of our hearts to know it. I don't know about you, but uh, I have had times in my life where uh, I wondered how God could still love me. And yet he does. separate my heart from the God who stays. It's too hard every time I thought I'd let you down. Always thought I had to earn my way. But I'm going to get the right back way. Somehow you don't see me like I do. Somehow you're still you're the God who stays. You're the God who stays. You're the one who runs in my direction. When the whole world walks away, you're the God who stands with heart and with arms. And you tell me nothing I have ever done could separate my heart. Could 
separate my heart from the God who stays. Amen. We've come to the end of our worship service, but that does not mean it is the end of your worship of God. Go from this place with the certainty that you will encounter Saul's daughter, Michael. You will hear those words that tell you you should be ashamed. You embarrassed yourself. Sometimes it'll come from someone else. Sometimes those words will actually come from within yourself. In the face of them, I encourage you, I dare you to dance. Celebrate the joy of a God who loves you and whose presence comes behind you, goes before you, hems you in on the right and left, above and below. Celebrate in the knowledge of that. And as you do, you will know three things for certain. First, you'll know God. Second, you'll grow in faith in Jesus Christ. And finally, you'll seek to serve others through the Holy Spirit. May you do that individually, even as we are a faith united. Peace.